We turn back to our top story this morning, and that is the polls open in Indiana across the state right now. Today's primary is do or die for Sanders and Cruz, with both candidates falling far behind in the national delegate race. Donald Trump is holding a commanding lead still with 996 delegates as he looks to secure another 57 delegates today, which are up for grabs on the Republican side in the Hoosier state. Hillary Clinton aims to capitalize on her momentum following major victories in New York and Pennsylvania. She now has 2,165 delegates. The former Secretary of State, as well as Bernie Sanders, battling it out for the 92 available delegates in Indiana. That number including the nine superdelegates in the state. Blake Berman in Washington, D.C. this morning with the very latest. Blake, good morning. Hi there, Maria. Good morning to you as well. When the numbers roll in later tonight, all eyes on the Republican side will be focused on Donald Trump and Ted Cruz. 57 delegates are winner-take-all both statewide and by congressional districts, so it's likely the winner will receive all or most. Cruz is pushing back on the notion that tonight is do or die for his campaign. Trump cannot get to the needed 1,237 delegates tonight, but an Indiana win would make that a whole lot easier. The biggie is going to be Indiana because if we win in Indiana, it's over with, folks. It's over with. And then we focus on Hillary Clinton. It is believed the race might be tighter on the Democratic side, where delegates are awarded proportionately. Hillary Clinton will move closer to the Democrats' magic number no matter what happens tonight. But Bernie Sanders is hoping to show his viability by putting another state potentially in his win column. If you can help us bring out a large voter turnout tomorrow, Indiana will be the 18th victory. Now, Indiana is an open primary, Maria, which means independents will have their say tonight. That has tended, an open primary has tended to benefit both Trump and Sanders. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Blake. Blake Berman in D.C. Joining us right now is co-host of The Five on Fox News and author of We the People, Juan Williams, along with Dagan McDowell in New York. Good to see you guys. And Juan, obviously a big day uh, for, for Trump and Clinton, the front runners. Is it over if, in fact, they take it today? I think it's pretty much done. I mean, I think uh, actually Donald Trump was right. He said Sunday he thinks it's already pretty much a baked cake. And Maria, you think about it in terms of even some of the Pennsylvania delegates that people thought were uncommitted, and it turns out most of them have already gone to Trump. And you see some of the second round delegates, people who have been committed to Trump, but Cruz had won in terms of promises to go with him on second ballot now, thinking the momentum is just too strong for Trump. I think Trump really does have legitimate confidence at this point. Yeah, but Dagan, I was just reading a, a tweet from, uh, from DNC chairwoman uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, mm -hmm. and she basically said, look, I would exclude independents from Democratic primaries. It's a little late for that. The independents are there, and they're going to be uh, critical. Right, and Hillary Clinton isn't even in Indiana. She's been campaigning um, <laughs> badly, I might add, in West Virginia and Kentucky, trying to take on the coal miners and then kind of do a 180 on what she said about putting coal, mine, uh, coal mining companies and coal miners out of business. But I want to ask Juan something. If, if Ted Cruz can deny Donald Trump, say, 50 of the um, more than 50 of those delegates, Juan, does it change the psychology? Because again, Trump's gotten so much momentum coming out of New York and those five right. states. If it looks like that people still don't like Donald Trump, does that change things? Well, sure, but already it's the case that it's close to like 70% of Republicans are not Trump supporters. He's just broken 50 in this last East Coast run. He pointed out the big win in New York was the first time he broke 50. But the question is, if you get somehow a cruise win tonight does it change the psychology well i think that then people could say well cruise is legitimate maybe some of the money will continue his money's been dwindling a little bit uh... but i just don't see that it's a game changer yeah but let me ask you this because the whole violent part of the story is really important fox news reporter matt finn captured these scenes of basically a rowdy crowd outside of a trump rally in fort wayne indiana over the weekend these are young protesters, guys, and they're so angry. They're voicing their anger toward the Republican frontrunner, using strong language, making explicit gestures. Watch this. Want to get your reaction, Juan? Yeah. 
you, you heard all those beeps. We had to keep beep, bleeping yeah. out what they were saying. That's that's how you know violent and and really offensive they were. I think it's very ugly, Maria. I think it's the kind of thing that suggests that their parents put them up to it. Those kids are being exploited. On the other hand, I know what what's going on here. I mean, you can see the sombreros, the whole anger over the immigration issue, uh, especially in that community, heavily Mexican, Los Angeles, in that area. Uh, and Trump has called those people criminals, rapists, uh, suggested that they are not worthy to be in America and should be thrown out. Uh, so the families are having an extreme reaction. But I think the use of kids pushes a line there. I think it suggests that, you know, they don't understand the kind of dynamic that suggests children are being exploited. And it, but you're basically... Yeah, but Dagan, you know... Go ahead, Jake. No, I was just going to say that uh, uh, these protesters might as well be voting for Donald Trump, to paraphrase the Wall Street Journal editorial page yesterday, because you're standing out there and they look like they're essentially for illegal immigration. And then you, you add violence on top of that, which you've seen particularly out in California. That does nothing but help Donald Trump now and come November. Well, helps him with his base. Yes. I don't know if it helps him with the general electorate. No, but how does it? But how does it help? No, that's how right. How does it doesn't. help Hillary Clinton with the general electorate? Well, uh, because these kids can't even vote. Well, I, no, the kids are out, out out of line. I mean, I don't think anybody says, "Oh, that was a good idea." But what I'm saying to you is, right. I think people say, "My gosh!" In every instance where Trump's involved, you see violence, you see anger, disruption. I think that does not appeal to Americans in general. Like he asked for it, though, one? Oh, well, what did he say about Mexicans? What did he say about illegal immigrants? What did he say about Muslim immigrants? Yeah, but, the, but so that gives people cover for basically violence no, but I think and beating people, people up and destroying public property? Well, that's a good point, Dagan, but I think that people understand that there is a strong reaction to his statements. His statements are... I can't even, I mean, they're demagogic type statements that are alarming people in this country. But the point is, is are those people going to stay home? I mean, is a big portion of the Hispanic community going to stay home on Election Day? Is a big portion of women going to stay home? These people who are pushing back on Donald Trump, if they stay home and they don't vote at all, that's a vote for Hillary Clinton. Well, without a doubt. The thing is that you know, the one thing about Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton in the fall is that the campaign becomes about Donald Trump. Remember, Hillary Clinton has negatives off the scales, but somehow Donald Trump's are even higher and everybody's going to be focused on the unpredictable candidate that is Donald Trump. What's he going to say? What's he going to say about women? What's he going to say about her and her husband? Yeah. It's all going to be on him. He's so unpredictable. That's why you're going to see the Democrats come out early with all their attacks on Donald Trump, they are going to go at him heavy yeah, and early. Real quick, Dig, and we got to talk about this coal story because right. hearing Hillary Clinton first say she's going to put all these coal miners out of work and then say, oh, no, I've been fighting and, 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 and wanting to help coal country get jobs for a long time, it's just, it's amazing. It's a, a complete opposite of what she's been saying. I, I think her response was laughable. Uh, but one of your previous guests was talking about Hillary Clinton and the future. Her problem is, is she's running on the last more than seven years. An economy that hasn't grown faster than 3% in a decade, the longest stretch at least since 1930. So w what is it? Because a lot of your policies are very similar to President Obama. Are you running on his record? What are you running on? It seems like she can't make up her mind. And again, she'll get labeled as a flip flopper. It's not the same as um, some of the labels on Donald Trump, but still, that doesn't help her. All right, Juan Williams, Dagan Mattel, thank you. We're going to keep following this. We've got Laura Ingram coming up in the show.